over the last decade, the World Academy has been looking at a wide range of issues confronting humanity. And we're looking at a nexus or a constellation of global challenges, multidimensional global challenges covering virtually every area from peace and security to law and governance, economy, uh, human welfare, uh, and the environment. And we have come to the conclusion that all of these challenges are inextricably interlinked with each other and that none of them can be addressed effectively in isolation from the others. And in fact, when we drill down, we find that they all emanate from a set of common fundamental causes. And the work of the Academy and the consortium over the last five years has been to try to explore layer after layer of what is the underlying foundations for these challenges uh, in order to arrive at effective uh, prescriptions for how they can be uh, addressed. And in very brief summary, we came to the conclusion that effective measures will have to be introduced at five different levels, not just five different areas, but five different levels of the global reality. First, obviously, the level at which most attention is given to altering public policies and also the responsible behavior of private parties, whether in business or in other areas, engaging the civil society. At a second level, that it's going to require fundamental alteration in the institutions of governance at both the national and global level for one of the obvious reasons that all of the challenges that we're looking at are global in nature. None of them can be solved sufficiently by any country for itself at the national level because of the increasing interdependence we have. But that these two levels where the most of the attention is focused today are insufficient. Our attention has come that there are fundamental needs changes needed at three deeper levels. One will be uh, radical changes in the content and methods uh, of teaching and education at all levels. Our focus has been specifically, uh, particularly at the levels of higher education, and we have uh, uh, extensive programs on what the future of that education should be. At a still deeper level, what's being taught? Be, depends on the nature of our theory, our current prevailing theory, and our attention has been primarily to theory in the social sciences because the social sciences are concerned with the processes by which human beings interact, develop, uh, and evolve. And we've come to the conclusion that there are fundamental changes needed in order to integrate the social sciences and bring them closer to matching the complexity of the social reality that we face today. And we'll be saying more about that. And at the even deeper level, we came to the conclusion that it's going to require differences in the way we think, differences in the way we develop our mental capacities from a particular or exclusive emphasis on uh, analysis and division of reality into smaller and smaller pieces uh, into different types of thinking, more systematic and more integrated thinking, uh, more less emphasis on learning about the past and more on uh, the creativity of the future, less of a focus, exclusive focus on the physical objective facts and more on the role of values uh, in knowledge and in determining human behavior and outcomes, less on or less on just looking at our problems collectively and more on realizing the extraordinary role, contributing role of the individual in uh, social evolution, another topic we'll be coming more to shortly. This has led to a, a series of courses that we've conducted at the Inter-University Center in Dubrovnik. This course, which is coming up, uh, uh, at the end of October on social power is the sixth in the series. The previous five are all available and hosted on our websites. 
both uh, uh, with video, audio, video, as well as many papers. For those who would like to go back and chronicle the earlier thought that we have uh, been spending on these issues, and two more that are already planned for next year. So this is part of an ongoing analysis. We don't think of it as a, a piece in itself. We think of it as an important component of a wider search to understand how we can grapple with the challenges of the, of the present and the future. Because we're talking about social power, we need to start with some conception of society. I'm not presenting here any specific uh, academic uh, theory of what society is, but in a more common sense way, I'm presenting three different versions that are quite commonplace in the way we actually think about society in a, in a day to day life. The first of these is society is a sum total of individuals, of all the people whether individuals separately or in small groups or in communities or nation states or in the world community. The second is more of a structural conception of society that it consists of uh, institutions, uh, systems, planned activities, uh, different uh, beliefs, knowledge, skills, laws, uh, government, uh, and these structures govern the interactions and relationships between individuals and groups. And that the development of the society really means the development of the contacts, interactions, communications, conflict, systems, exchange, associations, cooperation, coordination, and action uh, that involved in these relationships. This might be thought of more of a systems view uh, of society. And a third view which is more and more emerging and I believe is underlying the work that we have been doing is to really think of society in living terms, in integrated terms, as an organism. As an integrated organism that whose power and char characteristics come from the fact not just that it's many different parts assembled together, but it, that it's an integrated whole, that it grows, develops, evolves, to increasing levels of complexity and effectiveness through greater and greater integration, geographic, spatial integration, temporal integration, the integration of our institutions, functions, activities, sectors, and different levels of the society. Now all of these are open to discussion and debate, but I think that the underlying premise of this discussion and the questions we're asking and the way we're looking at it is to try to understand this thing as a whole, not just as its pieces and components, to look at the components to see how they interact with each other, interlink with each other, and form a cohesive whole. So the topic of our discussion today, and this discussion is not, we're not here to give answers today so much as to raise perspectives and raise questions for further discussion at the Dubrovnik meeting at the end of the month. Our purpose is to hear from uh, some of our speakers and panelists the key issues that they want to raise, some of the perspectives that they're going to be presenting in more detail in Dubrovnik so that we can have an idea of what is the subject matter we're approaching, we can all of us give thought to it and when we continue our discussions in Dubrovnik, we'll come with a greater sense of where others are coming from uh, in approaching the, uh, a subject which is really uh, pretty undefined. So I'd like to say a little about the concept of social power because this word can, is interpreted by different people in different ways and very validly. It has different connotations. And I'd like to think of it uh, at, at two different, three different levels. And that's the way our course is also structured. The first level is society is, an, is at the level of potential. If we look back over thousands of years of human evolution, uh, the evolution of civilization and culture, we see humanity has achieved extraordinary results in many 
different descriptions which don't need to be elaborated. Economic, social, political, cultural, uh, uh, scientific, tech, intellectual, and so forth. Uh, and that these po this results that we have generated must come out of a potential. They must have emanated out of some fundamental potential of human beings. Not human beings individually alone, but individuals in association with each other. So at one level, when we talk about social power, we're trying to understand what is that social potential? What is it from which the society generates, releases, directs, organizes, channels, and expresses its energies and capacities, physical energies, social energies, technological, emotional, mental, spiritual energies, aspirations, in order to achieve results, achieve results, whatever those results are. And please note, I'm, we are not intending here to say that any particular results of social development or culture or civilization or history are favorable or unfavorable. We're not passing judgment on them at the moment. We're saying society has the capacity to achieve results. And we want to understand where that power, uh, that collective capacity comes from. So at a second level, we know that uh, the, these results, that this capacity gives rise to social structures, organizations of different types in different fields, military, government, law, uh, economic institutions, uh, uh, financial institutions, educational institutions, and so forth. And we know that those formal structures play a, a critical role in increasing our capacity for accomplishing results, whatever those may be. But we also know there's an intangible, an informal uh, aspect to society, often categorized in the name of culture, in which that's equally and often more important in determining how much energy is released, how that energy is directed, and what are the results that the society achieves. We speak of values, aspirations, expectations, beliefs, uh, class, customs, ways of life, and many other terms. So when we talk about uh, social power, we're really talking both at the level of social potential and the means that we utilize to convert that so potential into actuality. And we'll be looking at that in more detail. And finally, there's another level at which we can approach the problem is, and this is an issue that's become very political. In, in these days as it was uh, in earlier times as well, and that is the distribution of that power. Uh, from the time ages of monarchy or the ages of the uh, 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 industrial revolution or uh, the movement and the rise of communism and socialism, there have been questions about not only how power is generated, but who who possesses that power, who utilizes that power, and we want to ask a fundamental question, not only an ethical question, but a, a, a functional question. What is the relationship between the distribution of social power and the total effectiveness of the society in addressing the critical challenges that we face today in humanity. What does the distribution, equality or inequality of the distribution of power have to do with our capacity to address pressing social challenges? So uh, there are many important themes that are going to come up for discussion. I would like to just flag seven of them that I think are going to underline and run through all the varied topics that we're going to discuss in this session and in the uh, discussions at, at uh, Dubrovnik. Uh, first is, what is, this, what is this social potential? What is the source of all the evolutionary achievements of humanity? Uh, since the, of our advance over thousands of years. From what is that potential that distinguishes us from the animal kingdom, that uh, the rest of the animal kingdom that has not evolved so dramatically? S 
Secondly, what is the, the nature? Is that potential limited? What are the limits to that potential? What sets the limits on that potential? What is it that enables us to grow and develop and evolve, apparently with increasing speed uh, over time, whether or not that evolution is going in the right direction or not, which is another question. Uh, a third theme is the fact, the obvious fact, that societies differ widely in their capacity to draw on and utilize this social potential. Not only differences between societies, but differences within societies over time. And a, a, a cursory study of history makes it very evident that every society goes through different phases where we are more or less able to harness that social potential, and that any particular point in time is no index, no reliable index of where we're going to be 50 years or 100 years later, or where we were earlier. But what is it uh, that dif makes the difference and enables societies to increase their capacity to utilize social potential over time? The fourth, I've already flagged the issue of the distribution of social power, both the legal distribution of it, authorized by law and government, and the illegal forms in which it takes. And what is the relationship of that to overall social effectivity? Fifth, uh, is our theme that every society today, and human, human society in totality, has a vast capacity to increase its utilization of social potential. And therefore, strategies that we pose for solving, addressing the challenges we face must help us increase that capacity, harness that capacity, mine and utilize that capacity more efficiently and effectively, more humanely than we are doing now. Another key theme running through the discussions will be, where does the individual fit in this? What is the, the role of the individual uh, in this process as a participant, as a beneficiary, as a catalyst, as a pioneer, uh, as a leader, uh, as a determinant of this process? And finally, uh, uh, what is the, re the impact uh, or the, the contribution of the way the society, the degree to which the society empowers its individual members on the total power and effectivity of the society and of its individual members. Somewhat related to the issue of distribution, but more directly, is if individuals are more empowered, what does that tell us about the effectiveness and capacity of the society to achieve greater results?